Burbank. What's going on everybody? I'm coming at you with a different video and this is a different video. I'm with my friend uh, Jacob and uh, we're here at the Chandler bike path in Burbank and we're about to meet up with uh, Christopher Rosati and uh, Judy Wilkie. Yeah. Okay. And uh, we, we were at the Talleyrand meetup and uh, we were very impressed with uh, what we saw. Uh, I saw Chris post a uh, post in a Facebook group on Burbank and uh, he had mentioned that there was gonna be a meetup at Talleyrand and so we took a leap of faith and uh, we genuinely like what we saw. Was there anything that you saw that really stood out to you, Jacob? Uh, yeah, just like the communication we have between uh, Burbank residents and Chris Rosati and Judy Wilkie was amazing. They addressed everybody's concerns and it, it's gonna be great to see uh, what else they have to add to the overall, you know, Burbank politics co conversation today. So yeah. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. And the thing is, like, the reason why we felt like it was important to do this is because, yes, as important national politics is, you know, Trump or Kamala uh, on that level, I feel like what's most important is politics in our backyard and focusing on where we're at, the communities that we're in. And I think this is going to be very helpful for uh, cities across <clears throat> the nation and around the world. Um, it's like focus on your own backyard. Yes, national level is important, but backyard stuff is just as if not more important so we're going to talk with uh, Chris and Judy uh, understand what their plans are for Burbank uh, in the future and also uh, just grasp a little bit of who they are because um, one thing that really stood out uh, to me for both of them was uh, how genuine and sincere they came across and they addressed everybody's questions and um, it was just a breath of fresh air and uh, it, was, it was good. And I feel like that's something that um, the world needs now, especially more than ever. We need really good leaders, uh, gen leaders that genuinely care um, and just have as much of that as possible. So we're gonna take a look at uh, Chris and Judy and then uh, we'll go from there. So while this may not be a political channel exclusively, this. What we're doing right now is focusing on what's happening right now in Burbank and it happens to be election season. We're about a week away from a local and national election and we want to give people all the information that we can give them about uh, these two candidates right now running for Burbank City Council. Cool, cool. All right, everybody, the man of the hour, Mr. Christopher Rosati, am I pronouncing that correctly? Yes, sir, yes, sir. Okay, excellent. So thank you so much uh, for taking the time uh, to meet up with us today to talk about uh, what your plans are and what you want to do for Burbank. Um, as far as um, like getting to know you a little bit, is this your first time running for public office? But thank you for that question. Let me ask you first of all, Sure. why did you guys choose Chandler? Okay, we decided to choose Chandler uh, bike path because we felt like it's like the yellow brick road uh, of Burbank and it's a road that goes all the way across uh, suburban homes and we felt like you know there's no better place to put a spotlight than, than this spot so I, I appreciate you asking that. So the reason why I asked that question is Chandler holds a very near and dear spot in my heart. Right. I grew up right down the street okay. on the corner of Chandler oh. and Florence okay. and when I was a kid we used to play after the train went by we used to play on the tracks because the spikes would come loose mm -hmm. and we would we would take the spikes and I, and I would put them in my lunchbox. So I had like 16 or 17 spikes in a lunchbox. I'd collect them when I was a kid. Right. But seeing the transformation that has happened to our community because of this, this bike path has been amazing. It's probably the most transformative things I can say has happened to Burbank since I've been here since 1967. What it's done is it's connected communities it, right. it's connected neighborhoods and when they did this in 2004 the three mile stretch i mean nobody wanted to live in this area because of the train when the train come came by it was rumbling it was shaking your house i can tell you that the homes on chandler are, are, are worth nearly as what they are now because what a beautiful beautiful yeah. oasis and bike path this is so i wanted to inject that because i had a lot of personal knowledge yeah. 
and it's really exciting that you chose the spot. Oh, of course, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And the the next question, which I guess is the most important question, is what made you decide to run uh, for city council? So I did run ten years ago for city council. Um, I decided to run in this election one for two reasons. One. I felt that there wasn't a lot of focus on our residents anymore, um, especially when we came out of COVID. Um, uh, I personally had did some things during during uh, COVID that um, I, I really wanted our council to do, um, and I did it personally to to assist in the in the whole COVID COVID e effort, and um, and I, I just didn't see the focus. And second, I've been on the planning board for 12 years. Um, I've lived in Burbank my entire life. I felt like there was no better person that knows our community and understands the working of our government than me. Right. Yeah. And, and it definitely uh, shows that you care. That was something that we, uh, Jacob and I have had made note of is uh, at the Talleyrand meeting, you could definitely tell that you uh, genuinely care and that's a good quality that you have. And that was actually one of the reasons why we decided to reach out to you because it was like, wow, you know, we just kind of... Uh, piqued our curiosity and we really had no idea what we were in for and we were like wow this is like a breath of fresh air and I think uh, just having this outlet and this platform open just to have people get a sense uh, more of who you are uh, is, is a good opportunity because a lot of times we see people's policies but don't really get a chance to see like who they are yeah and uh, and I really uh, again I can't thank you enough for, for extending this but we got a, a pathway to walk so we're gonna walk down okay. this way and then uh, Jacob's gonna uh, ask you a couple questions and I'll ask you a few more and then okay we'll great yeah, let's walk you. down the yellow brick road all Chandler right. all right really a beautiful spot isn't it it is uh, it, you know though the way the path meanders through burbank and then you got the artwork and the trees and the grass it really is beautiful when i was here it's an elevated train path with just rocks that's all it was it was just rocks so again to transform this community to what we have now it's amazing yeah and then uh, I wanted to ask you, when we were at the town hall, like everybody had a lot of great questions. One of them that stood out was, um, there's a plan for turning Olive Street into a bus lane, right? Can you tell us about that? So yeah, so uh, there is a plan to uh, turn Olive into a single dedicated bus lane, which would eliminate uh, a lane on east side of Olive. Um, I've gone on record to say that I think that in my opinion, because we don't have the ridership, the safety, and we certainly don't have, I think that, I think that the bus needs to be on time um, in, in a regular fashion. Ridership needs to be up to at least 15, 18% before we close down one of our major arterials in Burbank. Um, I understand the need for, to reduce our carbon footprint, but at the same time, we got to get the ridership up and we can't inconvenience our, our residents uh, at this stage of the game with no ridership. Yeah, so most people like to drive, right? There's, uh, like you said, there's not enough riders on the buses to maybe justify it, I guess, at this point. But uh, maybe they'll get there eventually. Uh, so we'll see how that plays out. You know, public transportation, you know, it, 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 certainly in this location of Los Angeles, it may be a thing of the past. And I hate to say it, but most people who want reliability to come and go as they please are, are taking rideshare, Ubering around town. And I think that has probably uh, taken the place of public transportation, at least in our city and what I've witnessed. Yeah. Yeah. And um, uh, other than that, I wanted to ask you about, um, so you, would like to incentivize people to buy single family homes in Burbank, right? So yes, um, two things. We, we, we're in a housing crisis. And what's, what's coming down from Sacramento with all the Senate bills isn't working. And my personal belief is we need to incentivize development where we want it so it doesn't impact beautiful residential neighborhoods like the one we're in. And when I say incentivize development, I think people are tired of the rentals. We need for sale housing. We only have about 50 units on the market right now. We need to get that up to two, three, four hundred units to bring prices down so young families can move to Burbank. Yeah. Uh, what are uh, what are your plans for Burbank to uh, help uh, recycle water in the future? This is a great question. I'm glad you asked that question. And when I went into the interview uh, for the endorsement, I didn't get the endorsement for the Sierra Club. Mm -hmm. 
but there were two things on my platform that when I went to the interview, they were so excited to meet me. They said I was the only person in Southern California that had the two items on my platform. Right. And uh, it was probably out of all the endorsements I got, like I said, I didn't get the endorsement, but in my opinion, it was the most exciting conversation I had with, right. with the individuals. They were excited about what I was saying and I was passionate about what I was saying. Mm -hmm. um, so Burbank manufactures its own recycled water. What people don't realize is that we throw 50% of it in the ocean because we don't use it all. Okay. And it's always been my feeling and thought that we should purple pipe the city. When I say purple pipe, every time we tear open our streets to repave, we should be laying down purple pipe for, purple is, is the color for recycled water. Hmm, and at, at some point we should be connecting and you'll see the purple somewhere around there. Okay. <laughs> All the city properties and schools are have recycled water. I want to bring it to our residential neighborhoods where they can water their yards and, and use it for, instead of clean water, use recycled water. Right. Um, I think it, it would reduce water bills and certainly our reliance on uh, clean water. And the other thing I had on my platform was reflective paint technology. Whenever we do parking lots or re restrike parking lots, we should be using reflective paint to reduce temperatures to stop the heat island effect. Those two things, I think, um, would help a lot in Burbank. Uh, those are the, I'm the only candidate that had something like that um, on my platform that hadn't been said before, and it was acknowledged by the Sierra Club. Oh, very nice. Very, not to go off topic, but I noticed you're wearing your, your Dodger tie. So yeah, I am going to wear the Dodger tie every single day until they win the World Series. <laughs> I've been a season ticket holder for 35 years, and uh, this is probably, uh, I'll be honest with you, on uh, the last game one, I couldn't sleep that night. I was, it was like such an amazing game. Uh, it was... That was phenomenal, uh, wasn't and, it? And, and the way that home run was hit in, in the yeah. bottom of the inning yeah. to win the game, the grand slam, as a Dodger fan, I couldn't sleep all night. And uh, I'm going to wear this Dodger tie until we win. <laughs> That's awesome, man. Well, yeah, man, go Dodgers. Uh, I'm hoping that they win as well. Um, as far as um, a little bit of your, your background, uh, and that was one of the reasons why I uh, made mention, because I think I've seen your, uh, your posters uh, like around Burbank. So you're a, a real estate guy, right? Yeah, I'm a residential real estate agent. Residential yes. Residential real estate yeah. agent. Okay, yeah. So I, I help people achieve the American dream. Yeah. They, they buy homes. But what's interesting about my job is people tell me every day why they want to move to Burbank. Right. And I get to hear that and I get to pass it along, especially in this election. I know why people want to live here. And it's not for all the, you know, they're leaving other cities because they dislike what's happening there. And we certainly don't want to make those mistakes here in Burbank. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, as far as, um, I guess like, uh, what is like a, like kind of like a off topic, but what is like, what is some of your favorite foods? What is a, a food that you enjoy, like uh, your go-to? Well, being, uh, so my parents are from Sicily. Okay. Uh, so uh, in my family, even to this day, we have uh, Sunday dinner okay. uh, at my house with my dad, who's 95 years old. My son, wow. I have a, a two year old son. Um, I got started late. Hey, um, nothing wrong with that, <laughs> nothing wrong with that. But uh, <laughs> it, it's definitely pasta and pizza. Okay, awesome. Um, that's my go-to and then you know, I think second would probably be Mexican food. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, those are those are my go-tos as well. Um, what would you say is the one of the, uh, as far as being a dad, congratulations on being a dad, by the way. Uh, I think it's great that you just started. I think that's great. I'm hoping to do the same down the road. Um, but as far as that goes, what would you say is like a, a, like a really good joy that you've experienced? Or what is like one thing that you've, that you've got from uh, fatherhood in you know, the last two years? You know, uh, my lifestyle has been, I've served on over 30 boards, commissions, yeah. and committees. Um, I have a very intense job. It's 24-7. Right. I work seven days a week. I work days. I work nights. I think when you have a, a child, right. it says pause. Right. Right. And when you're, one of the things that melts my heart, two things, is when my son says, I need hugs. Right. And I, right there, everything just stops for me. Right. I need hugs. Right. And the second thing is when he said, when he first started saying, daddy and now it's daddy i love you right so you know it just puts a different spin on things right and, and now i just i just i generate my schedule in a way that there's plenty of time 
for, right. for family. And I can vouch for that because we were asking about to do yesterday on Saturday and he said, I have a two year old. I can't, I can't hang out because I got to be with my two year old. So yeah. that, and I was like, you know what? This guy's a good guy. I was like, I, I respect that. Um, yeah. I guess my last question uh, for you is uh, what are some of your favorite movies? Like, I know it's always kind of hard to kind of pinpoint like what your favorite movie is. But uh, what what are what's some three movies that come to mind? Since we're in Burbank, we're in the uh, post production media capital of the world. So um, I equate movies with what moves me, right? right. Okay. It's, it has to move me. Um, I'm a very emotional person. Yeah. Um, both highs yeah. and lows. Um, when I first saw the movie Rocky, yeah, and I came out of that theater. Wow. I felt like I was like on top of the world. Right. You felt like the Italian stallion. I felt like the Italian stallion. <laughs> I felt like I was represented. There you go. But no, but really, uh, I th when you come out, out of that movie, I think Stallone did such an amazing job to feel, right. make everyone feel like you can do it. Right. You can do it. So I, I, that's one movie. And then um, there was a, a movie called Born on the Fourth of July right, with Tom Cruise. With Tom Cruise. Right. So I met the character. Uh, I can't. It's, I can't. It's skipping my name. It's okay. I met the character who, who's in the wheelchair, who the story revolves around mm -hmm. in Hermosa Beach. Oh, nice. And before the movie aired, I I, I kind of had a, like an interview with him. I was talking to him for over an hour. So going into that movie, I had a little bit of insight. Mm -hmm. And then when I saw the movie, it was just very very inspirational to me. Very nice. Yeah. Uh, any uh, final words uh, you want to say to residents of Burbank uh, to hopefully get their vote? You know, um, I've been on the campaign trail. I, it's, it's weird. It doesn't feel like it, but since October of last year. Yeah. So it's, it's a year at this point. And um, we have nine days until the election. Yeah, wow. Um, <laughs> I, I can tell you, I, I've worked really hard. My team has worked really hard. Um, you have a great team, by the way. A phenomenal team. Thank a you. Phenomenal and and team. I, I take no credit for that. Yeah. They, yeah. They, 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 so many people that wanted to help. Um, it's For me, it's been um, very heartwarming that people want to help me to get elected. Um, and I've met so many amazing people on the campaign trail. Uh, I've personally, have, I'll be knocking on 10,000 doors by, this, by when this is done. My team would have knocked on 30,000 doors and it, it, it's actually been amazing some of the uh, yesterday uh, I was out door knocking and someone actually came and brought me lunch they said where are you they saw me posted on on uh, online on Instagram and Facebook where are you and brought me a sandwich it's that kind of stuff that I'll never win lose or draw I'll never forget that um, and then I, I'm asking for your vote for Burbank City Council um, I really feel like my heart and soul will be focused on our residents. And if you're looking for someone that will really hone in and to make life better in Burbank, please vote for Chris Rosati. Awesome. All right, guys. Well, that's a wrap. Thank you guys. That so was much. great. Yeah, Chris, thank you so much. Yeah, that was great. For doing that. Yeah, if you guys uh, like this, be sure to like this, subscribe if you're new to the channel, feel free to share. And as always, we'll see you on the next one. Great.